High-risk groups include obviously women, the elderly, those with diabetes, and those structurally abnormal urinary tract. Counts for around two to three percent of all GP consultations, and around a fifth of outpatient urology consultations. Obviously, it can be treated with antibiotics, but there's increasing concern in regards to antibiotic resistance, and also recurrent urinary tract infection is a major problem. So, we have a dire need of new therapeutic agents. So the normal urinary tract maintains its sterility by a variety of physiological factors. Urine flow, the yeah, epithelial barrier itself, antimicrobial proteins, which some of you may have heard of, things like tam tamorzvar, like the kaolin, etc. And more recently discovered are some of the smaller peptides, the antimicrobial peptides. Uh, the four that have been mainly outlined in urine are human alpha pentacin 5, beta pentacin 1, beta pentacin 2, and cathelicide, and they've all been detected within urine. I've got a picture of a couple of those there for you, I'll talk more about those two in particular. So, so what are antimicrobial peptides? Well, these are sort of natural, antibi uh, natural antibiotics that are part of the innate immune system. They're what prevent you getting an infection in the first place. So we're quite well attuned to the adaptive immune system, which fights infection once you've got it. It's actually the innate immune system, the immune system is much more important because it stops you getting an infection in the first place. These particular peptides found on chromosome 8 and 3 in the human, less than 20 kilograms in size of tiny, 15 to 45 amino acids, particularly positively charged hydrophobic means, literally work by punching a hole into the uh, microbial membrane. You can see a little picture of, of one there with Mr. Henson. So I say they're a broad spectrum, but we gram positive and gram negative bacteria as well as fungi and enveloped viruses. The AOR study was to analyze the differential expression of antimicrobial peptides in different parts of the emo-urogenital tract and investigate their role in the innate defense mechanisms against the human tract infection. To do that, we did two types of work. First, the human tissue work. We, with ethical approval, we took 20 tissue biopsies for women undergoing urological surgery, five renal, five HIV, five blood, and five vaginal. We used quantitative reverse transcriptase PCR to identify the sort of relative expression of those antimicrobial peptides. And for those that were highly expressed, we didn't have them localized in using uh, immunohistochemistry. chemistry. Furthermore, we did not just in vitro work to look at the way they, the way they uh, function. <coughs> and we used the RT4 immortalized urothelial cell to assess the induction of the antimicrobial peptides following, char following charge with uropathogenic E. coli and with E. coli by polysaccharide. So this first slide just gives an example of some biopsies, um, of, which is one set of biopsies of kind of expression in the urinary tract. You can see the beast defense in one is constitutively expressed across the urinary tract, uh, particularly so with the kidney in this, in this sample. Human alpha defense in five, again, most of the tract, not so much in the kidney, nothing with beast defense in two, cathelicidin, exclusive the kidney, and we've got an 18 So that's just one set of biopsies. We did some quantitative real time PCR on a number of biopsies, and beast defensive 1 and HP5 in particular struck out because beast defensive 1 is expressed quite highly within the kidney, and less so in the ureter blood and vagina, but again, it's still expressed there. And HP5 in the ureter, so you can already see that there's a difference between those two particular peptides. LL37, what, which is cathelicidin, was only expressed in the kidney, and B2 wasn't seen anywhere. I've just put in a slide also of lipokalin 2. That's one of those proteins that I mentioned at the beginning, relatively well known, because that's relatively evenly expressed. And these are quite clearly different in the way they, in the location in which they act. As I said, we localized with immunohistochemistry is a times 200 magnification, and you can see both BC1 and uh, <coughs> BC35 localized to the urothelium. They carried out some challenge experiments using uropathogenic E. coli. Now, I'll just explain these two slides. We charged the, ch charged the RT4 urethial cell for two hours with either PPX, live uropathogenic E. coli, or dead uropathogenic E. coli. We used two strains of uropathogenic E. coli, NU14 and NU141, NU41 and <coughs> mutant fimbri. You can see that both live and dead bacteria lead to induction of these antimicrobial peptides compared to control, which is relatively standard two hours. 
Then we proceeded on further to do some lipopolysaccharide challenge experiments with E. coli lipopolysaccharide. And again, with BD1, you see this increasing pattern of expression of beta defensin 1 with exposure to lipopolysaccharide. In contrast, human defensin 5, although there's some, there is a rise in both the control and the uh, challenge, overall there's no difference whatsoever. So, in conclusion, antimicrobial peptide expression, as we can see, is varies along the urogenital tract. Beta defensin 1 was induced by both uropathogenic coli <coughs> and lipopolysaccharide. In contrast, human defensive fibers are used only by UPEP bacteria. These might reflect differences in the way that our own body, our own immune system responds to bacterial infection. It may well be the HD5 acts first, the one acts later once, once uh, you've got some bacterial pieces you know, actually first around. And on the other hand, BD1 is also expressed by the kidney, it's a, a larger volume in the urine generally. I'd like to do some further work in terms of ELISA to uh, see what's actually happening in terms of their peptide levels, as well as their mRNA level, and also we're in the process of collecting tissue biopsies in Europe for women with recurrent UTI to see what the role of these peptides is in that pathological group. But I'd just like to acknowledge the rest of my team. Thank you. Exactly what we're doing um, in the process of actually collecting vaginal washings and urine samples uh, and, and lab and vaginal biopsies using the system step. So we've collected about 20 to 25 urines, <coughs> uh, a similar sort of number of uh, women with R UTI and recurrent UTI as well. Particularly, we're also stratifying them with premenopausal and menopausal because there's a hormonal element probably in all of this as well. So we need to classify those two as we do next process. Two things. Can um, you just tell me exactly what the hypothesis was we were trying to test? And secondly, how many in vitro experiments did you do? Oh, okay. Sorry, uh, N equals 9 for that, N equals 3 for that. Okay. Um, in terms of the hypothesis, what we're trying to test is is there actually a, a difference in terms of <laughs> the first part of the hypothesis, obviously. Are they expressed different different parts of the urinary tract? No one's ever looked at that. And yes, they clearly are. I think the second is, is there a difference in action? Because they are expressed in different, different parts of the urinary tract, particularly, for instance, HD5 is at the ureter. You'd almost expect it to work differently to something that was predominantly expressed in the kidney. I think BD1 is particularly fascinating because until recently, no one knew that it could be induced. So this is kind of probably the first bit of data showing that actually we can increase the expression of that. It was just thought to be secreted by the kidney. <laughs> Were you surprised at the low level of the vagina? Because it's often postulated that it's a vaginal colonization that gives you a urinary tract infection. I, 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 yes, I know. I, I agree entirely. That's why we're taking you know, vagina biopsies and, and uh, vagina washing. Um, I think you expect a degree of tolerance there, though, because it's, it's, it's colonized by bacteria all the time. Um, what I haven't shown you data is that this other BD, BD2 that comes up. In terms of vaginal, uh, vaginal washings, and that increases, that's much more inducible in an infectious state, but not, within, not so much within the European Union. Thank you. 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 Thank you.